In my last update video, I showed the progress of my new CNC spoil board, which is birch plywood strips with slots cut into it, which form T-tracks where I can use my homemade T-nuts that I can insert anywhere into the slot. And when I tighten on them, they auto rotate and get tight. And when I loosen on them, they also rotate the other direction and I can pull them out anywhere in the slot. That's really quick. I also have a whole separate video just about these and I've linked to that in the video description. Last time I also flattened this whole plywood surface and now it's time to glue on the MDF, which will make a much nicer surface to put my work pieces onto. I've made the MDF as slightly oversized strips, which might seem a bit uh, stupid because I could have just used a whole sheet of MDF and glue it on top. But with the cutout in the back here for the two length sensor, it was a bit quicker to do that by hand. And then I already had the strips cut, so it was no effort to just cut out more strips. For clamping, I just used some weights. The foam paint roller works great for spreading glue, but it's not the best. But unfortunately, there is a slight problem with my usual one. I might forgot to add some water to the cup where I stored it. And I unfortunately ran out of these. The hold down clamps can also be used here since I made strips. The MDF is glued on, now I need to surface that. Okay, flattening is done. I think it's hard to see on video, but there are still some visible lines, which means that the spindle is not perfectly aligned to the machine bed yet, and I need to trim it again. Last time I used this precision ground pin, chucked up in the spindle and then I measured and adjusted until the spindle was parallel to the z-axis. But this time I want to adjust it differently and make the spindle perpendicular to the machine bed. And therefore I made a little tool. This is not my idea, I also picked it up from another video which I can also link in the video description. But I can clamp my pin in here and chuck this up in the spindle. maybe also turn it off. And now I can measure the distance between this pin and the surface and that has to be exactly the same on four positions. And if that's the case, then the spindle is perpendicular to the machine bed. And if not, I need to adjust as the spindle mount. I now just lower the spindle until it grabs this 3 tenths of a millimeter shim. right here. Now I need to rotate it to the other side and measure there. Oh, it's already grabbing right here. Okay, then I need to start my measurement on the other side and then rotate to this side again and measure the gap. Now that worked. And the gap in between here is <laughs> um, more than a millimeter. And the gap on this side is, well, 1.35 millimeters. And if I subtract the reference of 0.3 from the other side, this side measures 0 and this 1.05. I repeated that for the front and back or the spots along the x-axis. Okay, now I know that the spindle is tilted a little bit in this direction and this direction. And that tells me where I need to put shims on the spindle mount to counteract on that. Also, I made all the measurements with the dust hose attached because it's always attached during use and its weight can cause a little bit of deflection and now that's also taken care of. 
Unfortunately, to install the shims, I have to remove the spindle mount from the Z-axis. As you can see, there already are some shims in there, but now it turned out these are too many and I need to remove some again. Got a tenth and probably two one hundredths. Got the two one hundredths removed. Now mounting the spindle back on the machine. And now the same test as before. That reduced the difference to 0.45. I'm not quite there yet. It took three attempts, but now I have a difference of one tenth over this distance, which is more than good enough. And I also chucked up the jig in different positions in the spindle to kind of even out the spindle run out. And yeah, so front to back is now done. Now I need to do the same for the side to side adjustment. As you can see, that's not done yet. Okay, there are now also some shims in here and I got the difference between the two points also to about one tenth. So the tramming should be done and with that now I can resurface the whole spoil board and then I shouldn't see any more visible lines. Okay, visually there are no more lines and I also can't feel any. I'm pretty happy with that. If we look at it with a dial indicator, there are no jumps. Of course, there's a little bit of variation because the surface is still just MDF. Next, I'm opening the slots and I'm using an eight millimeter compression bit for that. The exact location of the slots I got from the existing slots in the table. I had a shaft chucked up in the spindle, moved it centered into a slot and used the coordinates to draw the slots on the computer. I only had to do that once since the other slots have a spacing of 100 millimeters. I roughed out the slot in three passes and then a finishing pass at full depth with 0.2 millimeters of step over. For the last slot I went slower at the end to see if I made it the right length, otherwise the bit could run into the screw of the two length sensor holder when it cuts at full depth, but it was correct. The slots are done and my homemade T-nuts also fit nicely in there. Unfortunately though I couldn't reach every spot because the spoil board is actually a little bit too long and I didn't think that would be a problem because I can reach all the spots with the surfacing bit but not with an 8 millimeter end mill to cut the slots but that's also not really a problem because I can just take care of that with a chisel and well the next time I have to cut the slots is when I have to replace the whole spoil board or the MDF on top and that will take quite a long time. So I'm okay with that, cleaning that up with a chisel. But of course it would have been smarter to just size the spoil board so the machine can reach every spot on its own. Okay, that should be it for the content of this video about my CNC router. I now have a properly trimmed spindle, a new and flat waste board or spoil board with the slots cut that fit my fasteners or my hold downs. What I would like to do next is to add some dog holes to the whole spoil board and then with some dogs have easy work positioning and also repeatable work positioning. And another advantage is that if I use these positions from the dog holes, I don't have to get X and Y zero every time for every workpiece because then I can use the machine X and Y zero as my workpiece X and Y zero. Because I have a file of this whole spoil board and also then the positions of the dog holes in the computer. And if I align my designs and then also the tool paths with the dog holes in the computer, I can then just position my real piece 
on the CNC bed at the same position and then the machine will cut at the right place. The dogs for that I would also like to make myself since there is a lathe in the workshop and I have this old homemade aluminium weightlifting bar from my parents that nobody used in like ages. So I can't use it for this and now it's a great secondary use for this material for a different project. I would use stainless steel if I had any of that size on hand, but I don't. And aluminum, 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 who cares, is just as great of a material for this purpose. So that will be a future project and I will now enjoy another useless discussion about this material's name in the comments. Guess what? I don't care how you call it. Have a nice day. And I need to trim it again. Last time I used this last time I used this precision ground pin. It's always attached during use and its weight can cause a little bit and its weight can cause a little bit of deflection and I think that's more than good enough. And I also chucked this jig up in different positions 90 degrees. Okay, the slots are done and my homemade tea nuts also fit nicely in there. Oh, great. Okay, that should be it with the content of this video about my CNC router. I now have a properly trimmed spindle, a new and flat spoil board. What the hell is this?